Okay. Alrighty, I see that I'm live on YouTube and perfect timing. My husband is just getting home. So hopefully right at the beginning, we'll have um, all of our dogs go crazy right at the beginning. So it won't go happen in the middle of it. And I am just going to let, or wait a minute while um, people sign on and find our lives. Hi, Heather. Okay. Hi, Daniel. Oh, more people. Hi, Jennifer and Mindy and Leanne. I might not have said that correct. Hi, Dee. Thanks for joining me, guys. All right. Well, I hope everybody is having a good week so far. Happy Tuesday. Um, I'm excited to hang out with you guys today. Hi, Renee, thanks for joining. Um, so today we're gonna take a look at a new stamp and die set that um, will go live on Monday, February 8th, which is when our next stamp, stencil and die release is. We're really excited to share the entire release with you. So um, there, I'm sure there will be plenty more sneak peeks coming this week in preparation for that release. So uh, kind of like last week, um, I, I don't have a whole lot prepped. Um, we're going to wing it a little bit, although I do um, have a, a basic idea of, of how my card is going to go. So, uh, all right, it looks like we have quite a few people. So before I forget to mention, because I'm actually remembering right now, be sure to uh, one, hit the share button. Uh, right underneath the video, there's an arrow and it says share right next to it. Go ahead and share that. You can share it to Facebook. You can share it to your Facebook page. You can share it in a group if it's allowed. Um, so definitely um, share and then let us know you did. And then just comment and um, chat with us as the hour goes by. And at the end of it, my partner in crime who is moderating today, Heather, will pick a winner to win a $15 gift card code. Um, so. I think that's it. I think that's everything I have for you. Let you know about the gift card prize, and I have let you know the release date. So uh, let's go ahead and get my camera switched around here, real quick. Give me just a second. Okay, got that switched around. Okay, and I am going to wait for um, YouTube on my phone to catch up. So just to make sure everything looks okay. All right, there we have it. And it looks great. Okay, before we get going, the first thing that I wanted to do, I actually had a request on Instagram. Somebody wanted to see how I refill um, my ink pads. So I have Coral Reef here with me. Hi, Sophie. Thanks for joining today. Hi, Jamie. Okay, Jamie Tomlin joined. That is my cousin, friends. I just wanted to let you guys all know that. Oop, my phone is, give me one second. My phone is um, falling over. There we go. Okay, so I don't know that I do anything special when I'm refilling an ink pad. So, but because I know my coral reef does need to be refilled and um, I'm actually not gonna be using it today, it was a perfect time to do it. So um, there's not really any great technique to refilling. So just open up your ink, grab your ink refill. You probably don't have to do this, but I just give it a soft roll in my hands first. And then um, just go ahead and you're just gonna drop ink all along the ink pad. So the key thing to, for me, and just, and be generous. Ooh, that one got a little much, but that's okay. So I do about that much. Um, I have this piece here. So if you feel like it sat in any place for a little too long, you can kind of feather it out. I think that this one's probably okay. Um, and then the key thing here is um, I am now gonna let this sit. 
I don't, I try not to refill and then use again right away. So I like to let it sit and absorb into that ink pad. So refilling an ink pad is as easy as that. I'm gonna go ahead and put this away and let it sit for a while and it will be nice and juicy um, the next time I go to use it. Okay. So let's take a look at the stamp set we are gonna to use today. This stamp set is called Reset. And um, we thought it was kind of perfect for after the year that was 2020. Uh, we thought this was a really beautiful sentiment. Um, and here is a look at an idea. And I'm gonna um, somewhat emulate what we've done on the, um, the back of the packaging. Throw a couple of little um, Leah-isms in there. But um, this is basically what I'm gonna emulate. So I thought it would be a good idea to show how to use this stamp set because there are a couple of tricks to using it that I have found. Um, someone is asking about if ink refills are available anywhere in Europe. And I honestly, am, I am unsure of that. I know that we have the refills on our website, but I don't know that there are refills in Europe at this time. Um, Mindy, oh, I'm so excited that we are gonna craft together. We do live close together. One of these days, uh, we should actually probably get together and craft. All right, hi, I've seen quite a few more people have joined. Um, sorry if I missed your names, but welcome and thanks for joining us today. Okay, so I wanna give um, a couple of tips on using this. Now you can use each of these words alone. Um, Obviously, you can use them together, and we do have the coordinating die to use them together. So that we are going to do that today because I want to give you a couple of tips on that. And my first tip is you want to die cut it first. So I've got a white cardstock panel here, and I'm going to tape it down into the middle of my panel, and you'll see why here in just a moment. All right, so get that relatively straight in there. I'm just using a little bit of post-it tape to hold it down, but you can use any type of low tack tape. And um, this might be a little loud, but I am going to run it through my Gemini real quick. Terry, it is, is, is a really cute set, isn't it? I think the fonts are really fun and the little added florals are really cute too. Okay, so here we go. Oops, kind of stuck to my paper a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, so you'll want to not like rip this piece out because you wanna keep this relative in good condition because we're going to use it in our misty as a jig. Now, I this little piece here I do rip off because it's kind of a pain to um, add your your um, die cut piece back in. So I just take that little piece off and I go ahead and I take this little piece off too. You don't have to, but I just find it's easier to get that other piece lined back up. Okay. So we've got that part done. Now, um, so I have to comment on this. So I don't know if Carissa has joined in today or not, but she did a video the other day and she talked about how when you smack it on your mat, like that's the lazy way of getting all of the pieces out. And I I was like, huh, I, I guess I've never thought of that as, as um, lazy. I just think of it as efficient because it helps get all of those pieces out. Now you don't have to, you could use your, um, your pick tool to get them out and I'll get the rest of them out in a minute but um that's how I like to do it I probably wouldn't do it if I didn't have a glass mat because you while well, you can scratch these you they're pretty indestructible for the most part um but I just thought that was kind of funny now I am going to use my little pick tool to get the couple of pieces out that are on the die piece itself okay Okay, so we have this piece, which is actually really cool in and of itself. You can actually even see what it says without the stamping. Um, 
And then we have the negative piece, which we're going to use as a jig in our misty. Um, before we do that, the way that I, I get it to stay down in my misty is to grab a larger piece of low tack tape and I just go edge to edge on that background and that will help keep it relatively in place. Sometimes you might have to reposition it, but um, this will make it so it'll be easier to stamp now. Okay, so before we move on to stamping, this stamp set, the words, those words are relatively solid. And I wanted to show you guys, um, I have technically already prepped my stamp, but I showed this last week. I just want to show it again um, so that in order to um, make it so your ink doesn't pool and stamp splotchy, especially dye ink, a pigment ink has, um, it's a different formula. So it, the coverage is different, but with dye ink being water-based and wanting to actually dye your cardstock, um, you just wanna prep your stamps. And so I just use a pink, a standard pink eraser, and I just generously rub it over top of those stamps that are more solid. Didn't feel the need to do it on the smaller sentiment or the florals, those are thinner lines. Um, they don't really need it, but the ones that are more solid, I like to do this piece so that you basically, what this is doing is prepping it. And, um, you know, in the manufacturing process, dust and particles and stuff can settle in on those stamps. And so this is just getting any of that off. I actually even like to do this if it's been a while since I have used a more solid stamp. I just feel like it kind of refreshes it and really gets it prepped and ready to um, take on that ink a little bit better than it would if you didn't. And then just wipe it off. If mine wasn't already done, I would actually probably do that a second time. But because I actually just used this yesterday in prep for this to make sure that I felt comfortable using it live, um, it should be good to go. I see we have a couple of people that are first time watching us and I just wanted to say thanks for joining. I'm glad you found us. Um, and I hope that you enjoy this. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my mini Misty today. I don't um, really need to break out the bigger guy. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that um, negative piece in as my jig and use uh, along with the die cut piece, of course. And we are just going to start stamping. So I'm gonna start up on reset. And what I have found when you're lining these up is look for the places where there are the, um, the cutouts, the holes in the letters. That is a great way to know where to line it up with the die cut piece. And it makes it actually relatively easy to line up as well. And this sometimes, you know, the tape, it does hold it down. Sometimes it might pull up, but as long as you have your piece in the corner, you can always uh, verify that it's going to stamp in the right place. So for the first word for reset, I'm going to use this ballet slip slipper, pardon me, which is our lightest pink. I am going to ink this up probably about three times just to get, keep that nice ballet slipper look, but make it just a little bit deeper. I didn't want to move up to sparkling rose because it wasn't the shade of pink I wanted. Um, but I did want it to be a little bit deeper than how light um, ballet slipper is. Joanne, I was just using a pink eraser to condition my stamps. That's what that pink thing was. Oh, Terry, you're welcome. I'm glad, you know, I, I'm sure we don't catch everything um, that people ask of us on social media, but we certainly try. Um, and I got that, that specific request to do the ink refill. So I wanted to make sure that I did that. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate that. Okay. All 
All right, so ballet slipper is nice and inked up. Looks like you can see it pretty well. Um, I love that light shade of pink and I love just by stamping it a few times, you maintain that nice light shade, but it's a little bit deeper. So it makes it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so I just am cleaning that off. I have a damp microfiber cloth that I'm using to clean that. Um, you can clean your stamps off however you prefer. Um, I just prefer microfibers and a little bit of water. I do have a stamp cleaner if I'm using a detail black ink or if I'm using an ink that is a little bit more staining, has more staining properties. Okay, so next up we are gonna line up the word refocus. And just the same as before, I'm using um, the cutouts or the, the holes and the letters to line those up with the pre-done die. Hi, Mayra or Myra, thanks for joining us. Oh, Monique, I'm glad you are liking the stamp set. I think it's really cute. Okay, up next, we are going to use Clementine, which is a nice bright shade of orange. This one I'll probably only stamp a couple of times because it's already quite colorful. I'm gonna stamp it one more time. Not anything special made by Pink Fresh, just a standard pink eraser. That's been my go-to tool for prepping solid type stamps. Okay, so that was Clementine. And as you can see, it is really bright right now, but the properties of dye ink is right now, it's just taking its time to um, set and sink into that paper and, and in some ways dye it, and it will smooth out into a really, beautiful creamy shade of orange. I am going to skip readjust for right this second because I'm actually going to heat emboss it. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp the last word first, um, the restart. I'm going to stamp it next before moving on to um, that middle word or that third word, I guess. Oh, hello, Pauline. Thanks for joining it. No worries that you're late. Um, we're not too far in. And of course we will, um, it'll be available for replay not too long after we're done here. Let's get that lined up a little bit. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that you like our ink combos or our color combos. That's definitely a, kind of a, a big thing for Pink Fresh. We definitely love color. Okay, so for the final um, ink pad color we're gonna use on this one, we're gonna use Ocean Breeze. This is the lightest shade in our family of aquas. So one of my, one of my favorites, I, I tend to lean towards our lighter shades, except for I really love Clementine in our oranges, which is technically our third shade. And I actually love Candy Apple in our reds, which is like the darkest or brightest shade. Oh, well, we're happy to have you, Alana, 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 I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Um, and welcome to uh, the great big world of card making. There is a lot, My as my cousin is learning. So my cousin joined on today or at least saw her comment earlier in the feed. And uh, we are recently, she is starting back up getting in the card making and paper crafting world. And um, so we are doing some card making together over Zoom. And she is also kind of learning how, how much there is um, in this card making world. So you're not alone and welcome. Oh, thanks, Alba. We love to hear that. I, we appreciate that. I'm glad you are loving our inks. Yes, D, I agree. Candy Apple, one of my faves. Big, big heart eyes for Candy Apple. Okay, so we have the three words stamped. And so now we are going to stamp and heat emboss the, um, the third word. 
Mindy, this glass mat is um, just a We Are Memory Keepers glass mat. It's not white, white. It's actually kind of has a little tinge of like a very, very light aqua blue. Um, and I actually found it the best price for it on HSN, if that helps. I think Heather just bought one, actually. Okay, I got to get my train of thought. Oh, yes, embossing. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and prep it with some embot with some powder first. And then we are going to go ahead and get this lined up. And I probably should have lined it up first before prepping with powder, but that's okay. I'll just wipe the stamp down real quick. Wipe that off just in case it got some of that powder on it. Thanks, Mindy. Yeah, I love this mat. Um, I didn't want a black mat, so I was really excited to find this one and it cleans really nice. And so I definitely recommend it if you're looking for a new glass mat. Okay, we're gonna ink this up with some embossing ink. You can use any type of embossing ink you like. This is my favorite. Oh, Daniel, I wish, but unfortunately, um, international shipping is really expensive, so we just can't really swing that. Alana, I um, got it on HSN. It is We Are Memory Keepers brand. I'm going to ink this up just one more time. Make sure that's probably doesn't need it, but just what I do. Okay, and in my sample that you saw, either in the email reminder that we send out, I did gold, but I'm actually going to deviate from that gold and I'm going to use this really beautiful rose glint um, shade that I have. So I'm gonna gently pull it up from that piece of tape on the back. I'm gonna go ahead and clean my stamp off and put it away. the way. Okay. And we are going to use this. So this is what that um, embossing powder that I chose to go with looks like and it's so pretty and I feel like it matches so beautifully with these colors. And I don't use it very often. I need, I need to reach for it more often. It's called Rose glint. Did not get that eight very well. There we go. Okay. And so because I didn't really give the dye ink much time to set, I'm just going to take a brush and brush off any little stray pieces of the powder that might have stuck a little bit to that ink because I'm certain it hasn't fully set yet. Okay. All right. All right, it might get loud for a minute, but I think after a couple of seconds, Zoom does um, mute out the sound, but we're gonna go ahead and heat set this. So here's what I'm thinking. I did not use coral reef ink, but apparently I just substituted it for embossing powder. <laughs> so, but that is, a. I think that just is beautiful and it's a nice um, match with these colors. Okay, so we have that done and I'm just gonna set it aside for now. 
because we are going to go ahead and stamp some more of the cute flowers that come in this stamp set, but we are going to stamp them on some vellum today. So that's just a piece of standard vellum. I think it's Basil brand. Um, and we are going to take all of these cute little flowers and we are going to stamp and heat emboss them each just once. And I'm going to try to leave a little bit of room around them so that we can go ahead and die cut them as well. All of them. those down. We're going to use that same embossing powder that I just used. So let's go ahead and prep that vellum surface to um, avoid getting embossing powder stuck where um, you don't want it to, st to stick. Pardon me. These probably only need to be inked up and stamped once. Color combos. Um, you know, I liked, I, I reference our paper collections a lot. There's a lot of great color combos in those. Our monthly challenge, um, just things I see in general, advertisements, clothing things. There's a lot of places to gain color inspiration from. I use the rainbow a lot too. So that's another go-to for me. So just some options for picking colors. Um, find your favorite crafters and emulate um, some of their color combos. That's also a great way to learn um, color, different color combos as well. Hi, Anne, thanks for joining. Or you might have already joined, but I'm saying hi now because I'm seeing your comments. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these heat embossed. I did not cover that one very well. All right, I think the rest of them look fairly covered. Kind of got a little wily there with that. get that cleaned off so I don't have powder everywhere. And we're going to heat, heat emboss one more time. Heat embossing on vellum is one of my favorite things. It's just magical. Oh, paint swatches. That's a good idea too. That's a great idea for picking colors. And there is, how fun are those? Okay. So let's go ahead. We're going to die cut these real quick with their coordinating dies. I'm just gonna use a little bit of tiny pieces of washi tape to do that. Okay. All right, just checking comments while I do as well, I get these all lined up here. Mindy, I'm gonna be adhering some of this vellum down. So maybe hopefully I'll give you some tips, but I think what I've just found is if you put a little bit of liquid glue behind the, um, just some of the embossed areas, they adhere down super easily. And clear glue, or excuse me, liquid glue dries clear. So even if a little bit seeps out underneath, you're not likely to see it. That's a good idea too, Carol. Thanks for sharing that. 
um, Carol shared that she just dobs a little bit um, uh, uh, with a small sponge and puts it all over the back. So that's a great idea too. I think, oh, hi, Simon. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Final die here. All right, let's just go ahead and run this through. Oh, Dee, that's awesome that you got. Now I'm gonna have paper trimmer envy from you too. I'm probably gonna have to break down and get one of those. Although mine works really well, so. Maybe not, I don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna set those dies aside and deal with them later. But now we have all of our beautiful little vellum pieces cut out. And so those are prepped. We have one final thing to stamp and cut out, which I'm gonna just go ahead and do um, while I have all of this out. And then I can do a little cleanup and we can actually start working on assembling our card for the day. Oh, oh boy, Kinnery. <laughs> Say hi to Anya. Go, go get, go get your girl. <laughs> oh, that's not the stamp set. Gracious, losing my brain here. Sorry, mailman might be here, or somebody's just what walking past her window. Okay, let's get the flowers here. We are going to do one final thing. We're going to stamp the cute little curved sentiment that comes with it. Just going to grab a piece of scrap white cardstock real quick. That's two. Okay. All right. I didn't get this. Oops, sorry. That was loud. Okay. So we want to keep that natural curve that. So um, I'm gonna stamp it kind of right in the middle of this cardstock. And I'm gonna go ahead and use Detail Black. I'm gonna use my little cube because I prefer the cube when I'm stamping sentiments. Um, Cause you can see I even got black ink on my window without using the large ink, ink pad, pardon me. And as always, I'm going to stamp this twice and just stamp light in order to maintain the integrity of the font and the size and the thickness of the words or the letters. Okay, stamp it one more time. I actually think I need to re-ink my detail black cube as well. I got a lot of re-ink re -ink refilling to do, friends. It's time, I just need to sit down and do it tonight. Clean this up. I hope you enjoy your new paper trimmer, Dee. Um, Mary Ann, I actually have two dogs. I have a Yorkie and a Cocker Spaniel, and it was the Cocker Spaniel that was barking. She barks at everything if she can see it. <laughs> She's also deaf, so um, that doesn't help. Thanks, Simon. Yes, we love our detail back black. It stamps nice and crisp, and once it dries, it's a hybrid formula, so once it dries, it is alcohol marker and watercolor friendly both. So it's a great crisp black ink, but it's also uh, has a, you know, kind of multi-purpose aspect to it. Okay. okay. We, I think are officially done stamping and um, heat embossing. So I can put that away. We're going to die cut this cute little banner with this coordinating the, it comes with the coordinating banner in the die set. My ink is probably not completely dry, but I will just avoid getting any tape near it. So it should be okay. And this should be the last thing we run through 
my die cut machine too. Um, someone asked how often um, I or I re refill my ink pads. And honest truth, um, I've had our ink pads for over a year and they're just starting to need to be inked up and I use them quite often. Um, ink cubes will need to be, <laughs> this is sticking, ink cubes will need to be refilled um, more often than the full size ink pads will be. I hope that helps. Yes, I love this little banner and I'm really excited to use it on other sentiments, not just this one. So, but there is that cute little sentiment that goes with the, the stamp set. Um, yes, this I think is a trick I learned from Jennifer McGuire. I have all of my pads taped together with a magnet in the middle to keep the magnet from getting ruined so quickly. Um, I'm sure you could probably get more information uh, on her website for that. Okay, I think I'm done die cutting. I think we're to the point where we're going to start assembling our card. So we're gonna kind of do this in pieces. Oh, one more thing. I did die cut a second one of these because I do want to layer these together and make this a little bit more uh, sturdy for when I go to layer it on there. So I'm just gonna take a glue pen. Ooh, hold on. Let's, let's not do that. Let's grab a piece of scrap paper here. And we're just going to get these adhered together real quick. This is just a zig glue pen. You can use liquid glue, you could use anything. I just prefer these glue pens because they're quick and they apply a good amount of glue quickly to your image or to whatever it is you're gluing down. I pre pretty much only use it for paper to paper um, attaching or attachments though. All right. But the great thing about it is while it, it does glue down really well, it gives you time to make adjustments before it um, glues down permanently. So you can fit all and adjust and make sure everything's all lined up. <laughs> Hi, Glory, no worries. Uh, of course, we will save this as a replay. Um, it, will, it will come back onto our channel shortly after it ends. So you'll definitely be able to um, uh, watch the replay. I've been using these glue pens um, since my scrapbooking days, like um, way back in the day. And D, I actually always order a 12 pack of these because I use them so much. It's how I stack and um, layer all of like my die cut words and, and stuff like that. So I actually always buy a pack of 12. <laughs> and I actually go through them fairly quickly. So I have just a um, standard A2 sized white card base. I did tape it down to um, make it a little bit easier to um, build up my card design here. Oh, good, Alana. I'm glad you're having it, enjoying this and having a good time. That's why we do these lives. We like to demonstrate our product, of course, but um, it's also a way to connect and create with you guys as well. And um, in some ways, get a chance to hang out since we can't really do it as much in person right now. I'm just realizing that. I think I kind of lost a couple of my flowers, but maybe I found them all. Okay, I think I got them all back. Okay, so this guy, I'm gonna pop up with some foam adhesive. Um, so bear with me while we do this part. We can maybe be a little chatty while I do all of these foam pieces. I should have pre-done this. I didn't think about that because I had the I had the 
extra layer already die cut. That's okay though. We'll get through it. Just more time to chat. <laughs> yes, she would. You're right. She would be, she'd be proud to see my card taped closed. I don't do that all of the time, but this card, um, the design that I want to do and the way that I'm going to arrange things kind of around the edges, um, it seemed like a good idea. I'm jealous of everybody that has gotten fresh snow. I mean, I live in Minnesota. Of course we have snow on the ground, but we were supposed to get like a, a lot of snow this past weekend and that never actually came to fruition. So I'm actually, I'm a little jealous of everybody that is getting all of the fresh snow right now. I would like some fresh, magically newly fallen, magic newly fallen snow. If I could speak, that'd be fantastic. That one's kind of, there we go. And this, I'm, you know, I could put more, but I feel like as long as I just get kind of the main areas, um, that's good enough for me for making sure that I don't get any weird indents or anything when gluing this to the card front. Yeah, I do um, tape my cards down sometimes for photos too, depending if they are being a little kind of a pain and not wanting to lay as flat as I'd like them. So I do that too. Okay. Stick this last little piece somewhere. Be right here. Okay. just you know, all these people talking about snow it's making me jealous yeah i am um, my husband does the snow shoveling and we have one of those snow blowing machines so sometimes i help out like shoveling the back area for the dogs or whatever oh it's nice that you're keeping warm by the fireplace that's awesome i wish our house had a fireplace yeah Houston is warm. That is where Pinkfish Studio headquarters is. It's definitely much warmer there. <laughs> um, Nancy, my mom loves Arizona and she is looking forward to the day that she can move there. She lives in Montana right now and she's done with cold. Okay. Uh, these narrow foam strips, I think somebody might have asked about them. I actually just found them on Amazon. So they're not, I, they're not branded or anything. So you can now probably search for them on Amazon and find them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stick this guy down. And I don't think I'm going to, because I want that. So this, I'm just gonna use a little bit of liquid glue. Right, stick this on here a little bit. Okay, so that I just am using a little liquid glue because I wanted, I didn't want it to be the same height as the main sentiment and I wanted it to kind of overlap over top of it. So I just use a little bit of liquid glue to do that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to arrange these vellum floral pieces and I'm I'm going to kind of emulate um what the is on the back of the packaging but I am going to take a couple of creative liberties I'm just going to remove the dies so it's going to look a little bit like this but I'm going to change it up a little bit because I'm going to add a couple of other fun things on here as well 
So I'm just going to kind of find natural areas where those little flowers kind of tuck into crook, like nooks and crannies and crooks of those, um, the lettering and such. Let's see, what about this guy? Where do you fit? So, but also, okay, so here's another new die set that's coming out. So we have another die set called Curvy Leaves that actually has three different dies and it cuts these really um, cute, beautiful, modern looking leaves. The first word says reset. So I have grabbed, I have cut some of these from coordinating colors of cardstock. And we are also going to tuck them in to these cards as well. So I liked the blue up here, kind of like that. Yeah, the leafy dies are super, super fun. So this one I might hold off on for a minute. And I like this one. Coming in here. Oops, blocking that sentiment a little too much. Okay. Yep, and as we mentioned, um, these will be available on Monday. They kind of still look a little bit like Harry Potter, actually. You're correct. I think you're right on that. I realized I did some pink, and there's just a lot of pink on this card, but I'm going to make it work. I am going to make it work. Hmm, not loving that. I think I'm going to go, ah, there we go. That's better. This one, I think I'm going to turn. Okay. Coming together, don't you think? Thank you, Julie. I love these colors too. I appreciate that. Okay, I got to get some stuff out of my way. I'm feeling a little, there's just too many things on my desk here. Okay. Got to move some things. Can focus. I feel like something else needs to be up here. Maybe some orange up here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and start getting some stuff glued down. So vellum, gluing on vellum. I just find some good solid areas that I feel like won't be a big deal to put some glue on. I don't glue the whole things down. That doesn't, that's, doesn't really bother me. And then I'll just go ahead and glue it in place, you know, and it will glue down or it will dry clear. So um, you should be good to go once it dries. Oh, that one got a little messy, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Heather, I know I needed to focus there for a minute. I was feeling like there was just too many things going on on my desk. Too many things. Okay. And after we get everything glued down and I've got everything arranged, I will be trimming everything off the edges. So keep that in mind as well. So on these little guys, I'm going to focus mostly on just the little inner stems for gluing them down. And this, of course, is giving me a little bit of a headache here. There we go. <laughs> yes. Yes, refocus. Okay. I don't know how much of this needs glue, so let's just Take a quick look here. Oh. 
There we go. This is just like a standard um, connect glue, the glue tube from Lanfon, that glue tube of glue that you can find from a lot of companies out there. And I've just added it into a micro tipped bottle. All right, we're getting there, friends. Okay. Oh, of course, this is just causing me headaches today. Oh, thank you, Julie. I appreciate it. here. Oops, Oof. but I want that to tuck under the T. There we go. The uh, If you guys love our layering stencils, be ready for this upcoming release. I'm going to just get this going here. Like it's a little, a little bit occluded. <laughs> okay. Yes, um, we are loving stencils. We are so excited about everybody's response to all of our layering stencils as well. We appreciate that so much. And uh, we are excited to share more. So definitely check back on Monday. <laughs> Yeah, wish lists. Gotta love your wish list. Let's see. Just don't. There we go. There we go. Okay. I think I'm close to the final leaf here. Which is good because we're closing in on that. We might go a little past four, just so you guys know, because we're kind of closing in on the end of the hour here. Um, just a reminder, Alana, that I actually transferred the glue into this bottle. They didn't, they weren't, um, they didn't come together like that. Okay. Okay, that kind of looks like a hot mess right this second, but pretty quickly here, it's gonna look a million times better because we are going to trim all of the excess off. I'm not going to trim that off though. I'm just going to trim right here so that I can use that again. I feel like I missed something right here. We'll fix it in a minute. Okay. Let's go ahead and trim those down. Trim that off. Turn that off. Okay. This might be where this little guy goes. Nah, I love that. Maybe this. There we go. That's actually kind of cute. Perfect. Let's add that. Um, I don't know if Heather answered, but our release goes live at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time on Monday. Okay. I feel like we might need a tiny bit more, more blue down here too. Okay. We're gonna kind of Okay. All right. I don't, it's not working. There we go. I'll do it from the front. Oh. Let's just snip it. There we go. Let's see. 
Eat those little leaves. You can use them later. All right. Look at how fun that is. Um, I got this. This glue container is from Doris, and I believe I just got it on Amazon. Okay. So there is her card for today. I feel like it needs a little bit, just a couple of crystals. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and then we will be done with this card. So let's do crystals here. And actually, I think I'm going to do a little mixture of crystals and the light blue jewels. There's already so much pink that I think I'm going to avoid the pink, any shades of pink on that. Oh, thanks, guys. I'm glad that you are loving this. I'm, you know, considering I didn't have any idea how this card um, was going to come together for the most part, I am enjoying how it turned out. So thank you. Okay, let's, where did that big one I go? Of course I, there it goes. Let's grab that. And a crystal. I agree, Barbara, everything does look better with bling. Love bling. And I just like to do little trios of them in colors that coordinate with my card. So up here, we're gonna start with orange. Add a blue jewel. And then add a small clear crystal. Actually, this may look better up here. No, nope, no. <laughs> there we go, that's just better. I feel like I fuss with this stuff more than anything else on the cards. Okay, let's go ahead and close these up. Um, someone's asking if I use the jewels or the crystals more. I would say I probably use them both fairly similarly, actually. It just depends on um, the look that I'm going for. Um, sometimes I like that iridescent fill that the jewels have. Sometimes I like the clear fill of the crystals. And like today, sometimes I use them together. Keep in mind the jewels um, are flat backed, whereas the crystals are actually shaped like a like a crystal. So they're diamond shaped. Um, so you've got a flat top, but not a flat bottom. Okay. And that is my card for today, friends. So I am going to, I have no idea if Heather has picked a winner yet, but I will flip the camera around here and wait for to see if we've got a winner. Oh good, I'm glad you guys are loving the color combo. I, I appreciate that. It took me a little bit to figure out a, the color combo that I actually liked for this. Okay, all right, we are back to me. So I'm just waiting to for the winner announcer. So I'm glad you guys liked my card. I know that it, there, it was just a lot of stamping and die cutting and kind of fussing around with where everything goes, but I, um, and um, that's just one of our new stamp and, stamp and die sets and then um, another one of our new dies. So what I featured today was the reset stamp and die set and also the Kirby leaves die set. Um, 
So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'm glad that you hung out with me for this hour and we got to create a card together. And it looks like Heather has posted a winner. Congratulations to Alana, Alana Sedano. Um, you've won today's $15 gift card code. So be sure to email me. That's Leah at pinkfreshstudio.com. There is no H at the end of my name. And just give me about two to three days, um, business days to reply, just so that you get a large volume of emails. So congratulations. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, in about a half an hour, there will be another sneak peek posted to our Instagram handle. So be sure to check that out. Um, I'm actually featuring one of the other products that we used today. Um, it's another one of my cards. So um, check that out at 4.30 Central Standard Time on our Instagram feed. And um, be sure to look through our stories because as our team and um, the group of guests that we have joining us, as they um, share their sneak peeks on Instagram, we do our best to share them as well in our stories. So definitely be sure to check those out on Instagram. Um, other than that, you guys, I think that's everything that I have for you. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday and join us on Thursday at noon Central Standard Time for Facebook Live with Heather. And I'm sure she will be sneaking another new product. So other than that, you guys have a